I just forget how cool this here is here as we on a Tuesday. You know, Friday night, I just go, Friday I just go home. Yeah. Um, Friday I go home before I come here, so I just prepare myself. But whew, yeah. cool. Why? That one in the back of you? No. Oh. Yeah. Um, that was only with a killer. It was done. It was done for a certain time. And they come and repair it. And since that, what? That's not even seen after all. That's not even shocking to me. Yeah. Very good friend, boy. And walk in, boy. The man walk in. Sick of that. Yeah, I hear kidnapping being solved so fast. I'm telling you. But he just goes to show it could have been done before. Yes. Yes, exactly. That's all it shows that it could have been done before. Yes, right, boy. But whoever was there before didn't have the will. Yeah. Check us out today. Tune into Power 102.1 FM this Friday for a one hour broadcast from 8 p.m. to experience the ultimate Friday live. Friday evening live goes to Rum Jungle Bar and Lounge this Friday, 30th November. There will be giveaways and lots of fun activities with the Power 102 crew. Rum Jungle Bar and Lounge. Here we come with the compliments of Karen Bradler. You don't want to miss this one. It's that time of the year again. Unique Furniture and Appliances Stores presents the popular Shop Early for Christmas and Save Sale with wonderful deals and 25% off all regular prices from Monday, the 26th of November until Sunday, the 9th of December, 2018. Step out of the old and into one of our showrooms at Coover, Princess Town, Pinal, Shogunas, or Marabella. We have the latest imported living and dining room sets, automatic power and kind of sofa sets, and Sectional unique furniture appliances stores 25% sale now on call 655 7084 and find us online at uniquetnt.com. Unique furniture and appliances stores we make the difference. The season of giving, sharing, and caring is here. This is the 12 weeks of Christmas on Power 102, empowering you. Sexplosion is our Power 102. And now on new days and at new times, the country's most informative sex education program, Sexplosion, is on every Thursday from 7 to 9 p.m. and Fridays from 9 p.m. to midnight with Dr. Raj Randanan, the guru of sex in the Caribbean. A lot of times we think that sex is totally below the waist. It is not below the waist. It starts in the brain. Your largest sex organ that you possess is your brain. Tune in for discussion on all sexual matters. Sexplosion on Power 102. Empowering you. Once again, good evening to you, you, and of course, you too. Dr. Raj is here. Sexplosion Thursdays starts now. Good evening, Dr. Raj. Good evening. How are you? I'm good. Pleasant yeah, good yeah. evening to all the viewers, all the listeners, everyone out there in Radio Land and social media. Yes. We're here to talk sex, sex, and more sex, <laughs> but in a different way. <laughs> not not the raunchy type that we do on a Friday. True. We're here to <laughs> sexucate you tonight. Yeah. Today I happened to come across an article on the newspaper. I didn't read the article, unfortunately, because I was so busy today. We, um, I must say we started construction on the um, Davis store today. Okay. So we have a um, we have a tentative date of opening, which is the seventeenth of December. Mm. So for the people in the Southland, be on the lookout for that. Good. So. Like yeah, so I didn't get time to read the article, but they were talking. Somebody was making mention about sex education in school, oh. uh, and I think it's a very important thing. And uh, you know, when we started off here uh, 18 years ago, <clears throat> we had the we had sex explosion, of course, which was on Monday, Monday, Tuesday, and fr Monday, Wednesday, and Friday nights. Yeah. And then during the week, we had the sex drive, mm. and that was at four o'clock in the evening. Yeah. Was it four? Yes, I think it was four. Yeah. And that was mainly to educate the young ones going home and whatnot on things of a sexual nature. Mm -hmm. Now, <clears throat> when persons hear the word sex, they may connotate in their mind that it is something that is raunchy. But raunchy does not have to do with sex mm -hmm. and sex education. Sex education is education about things of a sexual nature that anyone can learn. Now, sometimes parents will ask, when is the right time for me to teach my child about sex? 
and I tell them at the age of three. Some people say at the age of three, you're kind of crazy or what? Why would you say three? Because that's the formative years of a child. That's when the child will pick up on certain things and that's when the child, if taught the right things, will learn the right things. Lots of time parents would use words in an ad hoc manner. They will use words that, you know, colloquial words and whatnot. But they will not use the right words for the genitalia of the male and female. They will not describe things in the proper way. So the child end up with a bit of confusion. Mm -hmm. When that child reaches the age of um, high school or whatever, and they start dealing with the scientific words and the scientific terms, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, so all the time I call it this name, and this is really the name? Yeah. This is the proper name for it? Because they will hear all the street language and all the street slangs. Mm -hmm. So what we used to do, we used to try to package a program where anyone who is listening, sometimes a parent would be asked a question by their child about something that was sexual, but they don't know how to approach it and they don't know the right answer to give. Now, they may have an answer, but it may not be the correct answer, or it may not, they may not know how to put it across to the child. And that's where the challenge lies. You know. Many a time, somebody, someone will ask you a question. Now, participating in sex, and sex education is two different things. Of course, yeah. And the practical part of sex education is not sex. And that's what people have to understand. Because, like I always say, two, any two fools could have sex. Mm. Meaning any two persons could have sex. But when it comes to educating your young ones, educating the young ones out there, or educating the, the developing minds, that everyone can put it across. So the difficulty there is, how do you package something to get it across to the children, mm -hmm. to get it across to the young adults? And do you know how you do that? First of all, you have to educate the adults. Because the adults are so fearful of what information goes out there because they themselves can't put out the information. Mm -hmm. So they're fearful of someone else talking about it and putting the information out there. Because they themselves don't know how to package it. So in order to educate or oh, give education. You have to be educated. Yeah. But if the parents are not educated, how could they tell their children exactly what needs to be told to them? It's the same thing with teachers. You can't tell a teacher who is trained in a particular way to teach subjects to get into the talk of sex education because they may not even understand the dynamics of it. They may not even understand the psychology of it. And there's a lot of psychology that goes with it. They might know where to start, but how is the big question? How to well, start? it's how, to, how, to, how do you introduce the topic? How do yeah, you get that yeah. information across? Especially across? when you keep teaching your children, I mean, to be decent, to be respectful. And, and, yeah. Correct. And because and once you start talking, talking about things of a sexual nature, you think yeah. you're being disrespectful. Yes, and you think it's wrong. It's wrong. Yeah. Right. So how do you go about doing that? Mm. Again, there's a psychology behind that. There's a training that goes with that. There's a way that you actually... Before it, was, before it was made difficult to go to schools to talk and whatnot, I would be invited to talk to students and, and whatnot. Yeah. And you always start with a particular topic that will grab the interest. Now, sex will grab anyone's interest, using the word sex. But you don't do that with kids. You start with a particular topic and you expand on that. But you make it interesting enough that it will catch their attention. Because you know, children's attention span could sway very easy. Yes, it's so true. They could be easily swayed. So once you get the attention, you could start get them to, to think about what you're saying. And you don't go into deep meaning and deep words and whatnot. They're not interested in that. They're not interested in the scientific facts and statistics and all those kind of things. Children are not interested in that. They're interested in basic information. Because basic information is what they would take now and they would decipher it in their own way. Basic truthful information. Now, I use the word truthful for a reason. There are lots of information that is out there that is not truthful information. And you have to be careful about that. Especially, especially with social media now. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. With the advent of social media, you have a lot of things that are posted up on Facebook and other, other, other mediums. That will tell you of things, but it is not truthful information. It is not fake news. It, it is a lot of fake news. A lot of fake news. Yeah. The world is riddled with fake news now. Yes, yes, it is. About every single thing that you could think about. Mm -hmm. 
Because anyone who has time to waste, as I say, uh, um, uh, idle man is the, uh, idle mind is the devil's workshop. Yeah. A person who is idle will sit in front of a computer and decide to type up anything that they want to type up mm -hmm. and put it out there as though it is information, as though it's truthful information. Researched information. Yeah. <laughs> but they have nothing to back it up. Yeah. If it is researched information, there's a chronology of it. Mm -hmm. There's a bibliography that goes with it. Yes. Once you do research and you have all this information, there's things to back it up. So if someone questions you about it, there's all this background information that supports your theory or your thesis. With fake information or fake news, there's no such thing. It is just what somebody decides to put out there. It is just what somebody decides... They wake up in the morning and say, you know me, I go and talk about so and so and so and just going to say whatever I feel to say. And lots of times that's what persons do. It's the same thing with radio. You could have someone coming on your radio and talking about things in general. Like um, some time ago, I was listening to a program and one of the announcers was, was, was saying something. And I don't, I don't want to misquote, but from what I remember, um, he celebrated his birthday tomorrow yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. he will be celebrating <laughs> yes, yes but not celebrated no right mm -hmm. but you could have persons on the air also speaking like that mm -hmm. and that's actually what i heard mm -hmm. or you could have someone come in and just talking off the cuff and that's why that's why when i was first asked to come on radio to advertise in a sex program i asked who is the person speaking about sex and what is their background? And when I was asked the question, why do I want to know that? I said, I don't think sex education is justified on the radio. They make a joke out of it. Because there's a nervousness with it. Yeah. There was a nervousness 20 years ago about sex and sex education and talking about it. Mm -hmm. So persons will come and make a joke about things. Mm -hmm. They will talk about things that they hear on the block. Or things that are just put out there by persons. But they don't deal with the reality of it. The truthfulness of it. Because they were afraid. And they themselves were not educated enough to carry on a program like that. The persons who were doing it before. So all they could have done is take a topic and start talking in a movie land kind of way. And it may be the topic of interest for the day. If someone would have read something about a person being caught with a pornography, a pornographic material, material mm -hmm. and this is decide to come and make a joke out of it. Well, whoever get caught with that, uh, what you remember the first time you ever saw a pornographic material, that is the kind of way they will carry on a program as opposed to talking about it, talking of why it came about and letting persons know, well, hear what, this is not new, you know. The way it is put across now is new, but it's something that goes back to ancient time. And, you know, you could, you could have chron chronology coming down with it and you could have truthful, correct information being given out. When you have persons who are not trained in that area, who cannot decipher those things, they have difficulty in putting it across. So what they will do, because once I was listening to another program, and this two young ladies discussing horning, infidelity. And one of the persons was given advice that when your husband come home, you should check him. Check him how? Sniff him. <laughs> check his pocket. Mm -hmm. Check this. If you put on your phone, pick up your phone and look through it. Now, those are things that, to me, that's an invasion of privacy. Turn off. No, well, if, if your partner is doing that, it means there's no trust. That's right. And trust is the foundation of a relationship. Mm -hmm. If the person breaks the trust, that's something different. But on a suspicion, you can't go and break the trust of the individual. That's, that's not right. It's like, you know, long ago when we used to receive mail, do you know it was illegal for you to open a mail that is addressed to me? Yes, I know. Right? Mm -hmm. That is illegal. Eh? Mm -hmm. You can't do that. Right. So if an individual does something like that, you have no right to do that. A mail coming into your home in, a, in an envelope, especially in the U.S., you can't even put something that is not mailed with a stamp into a mailbox. You know? mm -hmm. There's an area outside of the mailbox with a, with a cone at the top for you to stick something in. But you cannot put it in the mailbox because that is illegal. It's the same concept. If I have my devices 
That is my personal device. You have no authority to go into that. Now, of course, if you have an openness that your device is there and your wife pick it up or your husband pick it up, that's okay. Once it's okay with them. But if somebody's telling you, break the trust of your partner and do those things, that is not correct information. You are going to cause persons to... It, it could bring violence into a relationship. You could cause persons to quarrel. You could cause persons to, to, to move out of the home, separation, divorce. Mm -hmm. You are not given the correct information to encourage people to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. And what is the right thing? You have a suspicion of something. You could either ask the person if it is so. You could get your information and confront the person with the, all the evidence that you have and ask them to explain it. Of course, some things could be explained mm -hmm. and something cannot be explained. You would know from the person's behavior whether they're guilty or not, or you will have a gut feeling. But that still does not give you the right to accuse them. Mm -hmm. The way... Reach their privacy. No, no, you can't do that. So it's the very same thing with education. So when you're educating the young one, you also tell them about those things. Privacy. And you tell them about their personal privacy and their, their space and what they could do and what they cannot do and what they should allow and what they should not allow. It is... You know, sometimes when you're talking about educating children about, let me say, strangers touching them, that could, that could be a double-edged sword, you know. You have to be very careful how you put that across because it could be misinterpreted mm -hmm. because you're dealing with delicate minds. But if you put together the scenario properly and that information is given out properly, that child would be able to start to create in their own mind the correct attitude or the correct way or the correct things mm -hmm. to do. To respond especially. Response. Mm -hmm. But what is important is that the person who is giving all the information must be trained to do that. If you're not trained to do that, you're in trouble, in serious trouble. So when one asks the question, and it is asked of me all the time, is it important to ch teach children about sex education? And my own answer will always be yes. But of course now, you have another factor that affects that, and that is the factor of church. And since Trinidad have so much church, mm -hmm. and I don't mean physical buildings, eh? mm -hmm. I mean religion, mm -hmm. you, you're dealing with a very touchy subject. A very, very touchy subject now. Because you're dealing with individual rights to learn, to get knowledge, and also rights that are being trampled upon as far as their religious upbringing is concerned. So it... it, it there's a, a, a balancing act now. You have to be very careful what you say. You, I don't know if you recall a couple of, not a couple of years, maybe oh, five years ago, six years ago, when they were talking about giving out, handing out condoms for carnival. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was a big uproar about that because mm -hmm. they were handing it out in schools and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. Some persons were saying you're actually encouraging sex. That's not encouraging sex. Mm -hmm. It is not. Persons who want to have sex will have sex. Persons will find a way to have sex. Handing a condom out is not telling someone it's okay to have sex. As long it is, as it is done the right way. If it is handed out in such a way that if you are sexually active, you should be using a condom. For your protection, because there are many STDs and STIs out there, which you can pick up very easily, and this is not 100% protection, but I want you to know that you are protected to a point. Mm -hmm. Also, it prevents pregnancy. You're starting to go down the right road. Now, those who are not engaging in any sexual activity, they're not even going to take a condom. They're going to say, that's not for me. I don't need that. Yeah. I am not engaging in that. Mm -hmm. Those who are curious about it and want to play macho, they might say, okay, let me take one and make people feel are doing that. Mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. Those who are actually engaging in it and find it difficult to go to the pharmacy to buy it. They say, you know, I, I have an opportunity to get some condom here and I could really keep it and it will protect me and it will protect my partner. Even the female could have it. Mm -hmm. So in case the male say, I don't have one because I like the raw thing, she could say, hear what? You could like what you want. I want to be protected. So then she's exerting her rights for her personal protection. 
which she has the right to do. Yeah. It is not, we were brought up to think that when we were growing up, it was the responsibility of the man to buy the condom and have the condom. Yeah. It was a male thing, you know. Yes. In a lot of instances, it's still like that. Yes. You are mentally trained to think that you as the man must provide the condom, walk with the condom, have the condom to protect you and your partner. Mm -hmm. So why it is the partner cannot say, hey, what, you don't have one? Yeah, I have one. Mm -hmm. I know we're going to engage in sex. We're boyfriend and girlfriend. It's what we do. Yeah, but I want to be protected. I don't want to get pregnant before my time. I want to be protected all wrong. So what's wrong with that? Again, education is the one... I, it, it's how you package it to the persons out there. Mm -hmm. Now, those who, and again, I, I reiterate, those who are not engaging in anything that is sexual will tell you plain, I don't need that. I have no need for that. I am not engaging in that. That is not my lifestyle. That is, I don't want to have anything to do with that. And they make, they, they cut their cards straight. It's like a person. There are many young men out there and young women out there who don't drink, who don't smoke. Yeah. You could carry them where? You could carry them in a rum shop, mm -hmm. put them to sit down, and they will not buy a beer or have an alcoholic beverage, no matter what you do. I had friends like that growing up. Yeah. No matter what you do, but they want a line, mm -hmm. they want to be in the company of you, but they're not part part partaking in that. And to this day, I have a friend like that. He do not partake in those things, he don't partake in it, but we line regularly. My Sarubai is also like that. We will hang out, have a good time, play cricket, go online, whatever. He don't touch alcohol. Mm -hmm. And nobody can make him drink alcohol. Right. Because that's what he that's who he is. He so it's the yeah. same thing with the young. Don't tell me that you know sometimes you want to think that the younger persons do not have that responsibility. They have that responsibility. Because if that young man, my friend stopped drinking alcohol and eating meat at the age of seven, to this day. So he made that decision at the age of seven. My Sarubai, the same thing. At tender age, he decided that's what he wants to do. Although everyone at home was doing otherwise. They even own a rum shop. But he decided that is not his life. So if a young person can make that decision, why they cannot make decision about sex? Mm -hmm. If given the proper information. Yeah. Because based on they, their choice was based on religion. And the path that they wanted to take. So, they could have deciphered at that age that, hey, I will not indulge in these things because it's not the part for me. Because this is the part I've, I've chosen for myself. So, the young man in his preteen or teens, the young lady in her preteen or teens, given the right information, can also make that decision that these things are not for me. I have been educated about it and I have a, I have a, a, a working knowledge of it. So when it's time for me to do what I have to do, I am educated enough in this so I will not make the mistakes that other young people do. Look at how many young ladies today are pregnant, bringing a child into this world and they, 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 they can't take care of themselves. Hmm. They cannot take care of themselves, but they're bringing a child into the world. Hmm. And when I tell, talk about taking care of yourself, I'm talking about being mature enough to understand that you have a life to take care of yeah, yeah. Committed a, a, a life that is dependent on you as a parent. Mm -hmm. Well, it's supposed to be dependent on, a, on parents, eh? but you know the circumstances. Secondly, you're not financially stable. The home that you're in must be overcrowded already, and you're bringing another life into that home mm -hmm. with the hope that the elders in the home will take care of the child so you could still live a young life. Go online, party, whatever, whatever, whatever. and But you have the responsibility of a child. So education does not only cover the act of sex. It covers all these things. It covers the social impact. So when you start telling young ones about these things, and they start putting it into their scenario, where they're living, who they're living with, their parents, their grandparents, extended family, if they live on the same compound, if they live in the same home, the size of the home. The conditions at home. The conditions. Mm -hmm. you're, not, you're not belittling anyone, you know, but you're telling them now, hear what? Think about it. The mouths to feed. How are you going to do this? Mm -hmm. 
you will find that a yacht, lot of young ladies now will say, here, well, I'm not going to have sex without protection. Mm. I'm definitely not going to do that. Because in their mind now, they are already affected. But when you threaten a child, if you bring a child into your house, I'll go kill you. Yeah. That, is not, that is not putting fear into the child, you know. Mm. That is you being a fool mm -hmm. and talking to the child in a foolish way because that is not going to stop the curiosity of engaging in sexual, uh, a sexual act. Exactly. But the education part is what is important because you are putting across that information where the child now starts to think and they think about the bigger picture, not the small picture. The small picture, oh, I like the boy, you know, and mm -hmm. we do our thing, man. We try our thing, and I'm sorry I get pregnant, but I will bring the child in the world. What happens there? But when they see the bigger picture now, when they're going to do the act, or if they're thinking about doing the act, they will look at all the precautions that they need to take. And then you show them the other side of it, which is the STD and STI side. Let them know that these things exist. The strains that they are now. What could happen to you? You show them some photographs. Photographs leaves them back in your mind. And I remember when I was a young man, Form 1, Northeastern College, the traffic branch had a display of persons who were injured in accidents. And one of them is a guy who lost his elbow. Mm -hmm. I put, you know, fellas have that long time had a style, you put your elbow yeah, on the car. Outside the window. But here is that. That have impacted on my life forever. You know? mm -hmm. I still see guys sometimes they hang their hand outside the door. Yeah. You could lose your arm doing I that. You. You're hugging up your door and driving. Mm -hmm. The car is to protect you, you know. You cannot protect a car by putting your hand outside and hugging up your door, you know. Hmm. Some of them have their hands hanging out. That's what I'm telling I saw it recently. Yeah. I saw it recently and I said, this person have any idea that he could lose his hands driving like that? Mm -hmm. A vehicle passed very close to you, could take your hands off. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hmm. So, many a times... Those are the things that leaves an impact on your mind. Like I said, I was 11 years old. I saw that and I was like, never me. I will never put my elbow because long ago cars didn't have air condition as they do now. Yeah, so right. of course, the normal thing, your, your glass down, you'll yeah. put your hand like this. Mm -hmm. But for the time you saw that, in front of time you did this, that photograph flashed in your mind, don't put your hand here, put your hand back inside. Mm -hmm. Protect yourself. Yeah. So it's the same thing. You're telling preteens and teenagers these things about the protection and you're showing them of the dangers of these things, mm -hmm. they will make the decision that I am not going to do that. Mm -hmm. I am not going to... End. Of course, you'll have the, the, the few and far between who will say, to hell was with everything, are you going ahead? Mm -hmm. But that's just the few. Mm -hmm. But once the education is out there, you're going to strengthen the results of those who don't want to do it mm -hmm. or those who feel like thief in a chance. Yeah. They will suddenly say, nah, boy, me you taking a chance? Huh? Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nah, boy. <laughs> not, not at all. I know big men. Yeah. Mature adults know, and some of them do call the program and they say the very same thing. I will not take the chance knowing the kind of things that they have out there. They tell you that plainly. Mm. I am not going to take that chance. I know all the dangers that have out there and how deadly it could be. Yeah. I could lose my life doing this thing. Yeah. So I don't take the chance. <laughs> We need to go to a short break and we'll be right back. Sex Pros and Thursdays at Power 2.1 FM with Dr. Raj. We'll continue on the other side of these. At 8 o'clock, we go live on a live. Karaoke Beyond Karaoke. Out there in Kamuto, we're going to tell you all about it in a short show, right? But Venture Credit Union branches at Kuva, Aruka, and San Fernando will be open on Saturdays. December the 1st, 8th and 15th between 8 a.m. and 1 p.m. to facilitate, facilitate loans only, right? That's to facilitate loans only. Call them at 225-4828 for further inquiries. Venture Credit Union. Why just dream when you can venture? Can you carry that pain? Yeah. Yes, it's Power Water 2.1 FM's Beyond Karaoke Competition every Thursday. Thursday. Think you can sing better than the average show? Let's go. 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 Let's go
Spiritual head of the Hindu. Oh. Spiritual head. Like the, like the Pope. Well, um, yeah. 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 Like the Archbishop. Oh, okay. Dharma okay. Acharya. Dharma Acharya. Yeah. Under that is the Sankaracharya. Yeah. My grandson's father, they are Hindu. Mm -hmm. And my daughter, they are Catholic, so I say, hello. This is the boy in the best place. Let them know the two. Of course. So even they see him when they are the same, but just up in the clothes that they are. I like to see him. Where they are, where they invite the pundit and the pundit go, he mocking the pundit. He sitting down and the pundit and he mocking the pundit. I said, leave him alone. Let them learn that. Let them know that. Let them have that. Yeah, yeah, that exposure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's very important. Yeah, boy. Of course they are. At it, we go live and alive at LC's bar and the one-stop shop on in 106 Main Road Komuto. But that's for later, this for now. Dr. Raj, you know, I saw on my phone and nice as you were talking about contraceptives and stuff. You know, I saw somebody sent me my phone. Um, I would name my daughter pregnant. So um, 
So if John approaches and says, Hi, I'm John, she would say, Yes, I'm pregnant. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> you running away from that? Yeah. The responsibility? Yeah. <laughs> I thought that was really funny. You know, your name is not a pregnant. Mm -hmm. so any well, that's where the idle mind comes in, you know. Those guys who sit down and do the memes. I remember when you said Those that. guys who do the memes, that's what they do, you know. They sit down and think of all kind of crap. And that's some Trinidadians yeah. real good at memes, eh? How you mean? Because, I mean, we are, we, are, we are very jovial people. Yes, 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 yes. We could make a joke out of anything. Yeah, it's true. So when it, when it comes to meme, we do some really good memes. Yes, the name of your child pregnant. Uh -huh. <laughs> and there's a special lady who looks at this program via Instagram. Mm -hmm. And she just put a smile on my face because she's always smiling <laughs> for some reason or the other, <laughs> especially when we smile here. Yeah. I see um, someone said, let me see, let me make sure, um, well, for that, to that person, let me get a name. Janelle Joseph, I think is her name. Janelle, um, it's Dr. Raj and Mac Daddy, David McIntyre, yes. not Junior. Junior is tomorrow. Good. Nisha Maharaj says, good night. Candy says hi and all reach. Mm -hmm. Samantha says hi, good evening, Dr. Raj. And Celia says hi and good night, Dr. Raj. Mm -hmm. So they, they're all on, on um, Facebook. Mm -hmm. Of course, we have Izzy. We have Petra. So they're on. Good. I saw the Toyota Hilux Club is also on. Mm -hmm. And to the Hindu com community, I have to extend my condolences. Our Dharmacharya died mm -hmm. today. So well, that's my experience. Who is the Dharamacharya? Yeah, well, as the spiritual head of the Hindu. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm happy to know that now. Mm -hmm. It's like the Archbishop. Good. Similar. Mm -hmm. How do you so, pronounce it again? Dharma Acharya. Dharma Acharya. Dharma Acharya. Yeah. Good. Dharma is belief system. Mm -hmm. So the person who holds up the belief, that's what he does. Okay. So that's why that's the one who held, holds up the belief. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Make that, keep that to the forefront. Of course. I like info. <laughs> Information. That's why I tell you, education is very important. Right? Yes. The more education you have, yes. the more. And education, education is never. You're never oh. saturated with education. No, no, no. It's never outdated. No, and it's, <laughs> you're never saturated. You That's can right. you can be educated in so many different yeah, ways. Yeah. And the simplest things, you know, everything that you encounter in life is education to you. Mm -hmm. Every single thing that you do. Yes. Doesn't matter if you're going fishing. If you're buying a car, if you're buying a shirt, mm, always something if you're putting on a shoe, that's yeah. ed you're educating yourself on the aspects of dealing with these things and using it. Yes. So you're never saturated with education. Mm -hmm. So when you hear a person say, well, that's enough about that. No, it's not. Never. Give as much, in and again, give as much correct information. That's why I, I, I don't know if you ever heard me say this, but I'm telling you this now. Mm -hmm. I have thrown out a challenge 18 years ago when people were questioning my right to be on the radio, when they were questioning my qualification, when they were questioning me. And you know what was my challenge to anyone out there, and it still holds? Mm -hmm. Prove anything that I've said on the radio to be false, mm -hmm. and I come off the radio. Mm -hmm. Prove whatever I put out there to be false, mm -hmm. and I will come off the radio with an apology. I have no problem with that. Because when I come here, I have a responsibility to every single person out here. Whether they're listening to the program because they like me, they like Power 102, or they want to criticize, whatever. It doesn't matter why you're listening to the program, watching the program, or watching me. I am here to give correct information. And that is what is important exactly. with education on the whole. Always give the correct thing. So when somebody goes out there and they're dealing with another person, the person asks them a question, they can answer the question correctly. And the person might say, well, where are you learning that from? How do you know that? Well, I heard Dr. Rad say it. But that is incorrect. No, I heard Dr. Rad say it. And he's the one who, tell, who has said that, any, if it, that anything that he puts out out there on the radio, if it's incorrect, if it's false information, he will leave the radio station and he's been on for 18 years. Mm. So that's not an easy challenge to just put out out there. Exactly. And I'm not doing, doing it in an egotistical way. You know? I'm doing it in a way that I have to always be on my P's and Q's. It's a way for me to keep myself in check, you know. When I put that, in, when I put that challenge out there, I have to keep myself in check to not to mess up. 
I must make sure I don't mess up. So when somebody reads something false and they put it out and they come to the program and they say, but I, I say, no, that is not correct. That is not correct information. It's not correct information. The, my job, my mandate to myself is, was always to change the way we think and we deal with sex in Trinidad and Tobago and the Caribbean, the wider world, but more so Trinidad and Tobago. How we deal with it. And we cannot be dealing with something as, as serious as that, as that, with false information, or with makeup information, or with persons just saying, well, I have a feelings, it's so-and-so. You can't do that. Then what are you doing? Oh, I heard so. Oh, I heard so-and-so. Yeah. Now, there are a lot of old wives' tales out there also. Mm -hmm. You know, long ago, I, I remember, as a young man, liming on the block and whatnot, you hear the fellas and them talking about things. Well, that's where you just get all the false information on the block. And then fellas will say, well, you know, um, if I get an STD, tell my wife I was sitting on a hot gavel nice. <laughs> and of course, better get that. Yeah. Well, in them days, it wasn't STD. It was venereal disease. Eh? Yeah. That was the word. Yeah. Not STD. Yeah. No, it's STD and STIs. Yeah. But as a young man, now, one of the things that made me study sex, that made me become who I am today, is the false information that was given to me as a young man. Because I believe in logic. I believe in thinking logically. And as a young man, I'll have a lot of questions because I had a quest in my, uh, my personal quest was to be educated in this area. Mm -hmm. I did not know I would become a sexologist and I would be talking on radio, educating people, but I knew I wanted all the information and education as possible. And when you sit down, uh, you know, in the evening time after you play the game of raisin on the, on the corner, yeah. and then the fellas sit down on the, on, on, on the culvert, mm -hmm. and you're talking, you hear fellas talking about how much they mash up and how they do this and how they do that. Mm -hmm. And then in my mind, oh, I'm trying to figure out, well, if you leave work four o'clock, and you come in and kick in ball five o'clock and you're leaving Port of Spain to come grandy. There's an hour drive. And when you come, we see you walking in. When you get time to mash up something. I tell you. <laughs> so when you start thinking logically and you hear what the fellas are saying, mm -hmm. it doesn't add up. It stops adding up. So when fellas were talking, their, their macho talk and false talk, because it's, it's a bit of bravado. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Yeah. It, 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 they didn't do it in a way that some of them were trying to, to, to toot their own horn. Mm -hmm. Some of them were trying to create an impression about themselves or whatever. So when you hear them talk like that, I would switch off for those who was not impressing me because I already figured out you lying. You're talking crap. But those who were giving some sort of truthful information, they will be guarded with what they're saying also. You know? mm -hmm. They're not the ones who come in out of boost and brag, you know. That is one of the things that drove me to study this and find out more and more information about it. So that when someone tells me something, I will look at the logic of it. It's like when somebody call a figure of the number of persons they have had intercourse with. There's a way to figure out or, or a mathematical way that you could prove to them whether they're talking the truth or nothing. Because mathematics don't lie. No, at all. <laughs> Mathematics does not lie. You know? Although there's a, there's, a, there's a very interesting subject that we, we did in school called statistics. And one of, the, um, one of the books we had to read was How to Lie with Statistics. Hmm. Now, you could take statistics and turn it around and put a spin on it to say what you wanted to say. You could do that. You have the power to do that with using figures. Yeah. But if you have that analytical mind and logical mind and somebody says something and you start working it out, you could decipher whether they're saying the truth or not, mm -hmm. mathematically. It's true. I saw a message coming here. Good evening, Dr. Rad. Some years ago, I sat in a taxi. Two men who were discussing your program said that you spoke about all sort of perverted, thing, mm -hmm. perverted things in it. They, however, continue to discuss nearly issues to be that meant that dispute what they felt. They paid full attention. They were more educated after, I am sure. Mm -hmm. I'm sure. I, I, 
I have chosen one of the most controversial of topics to educate myself with and to yeah. deal with. Yeah. I have told person that I deal with a topic that is so controversial, it's controversial worldwide. You see men in high positions, especially now, men who are revered, being destroyed by sexual scandals. Yeah. And I have been in the arena of sex and sex education and dealing with things of a sexual nature since I was in my teenage years mm. and you have never heard me in a scandal. Nice. <laughs> Knock on wood. I have never been in a scandal. Why? Because education again. Knowing the facts and knowing what you can do and cannot do and knowing how to cover your tail. Mm -hmm. Because people are coming at you left, right and center, you know. Yeah. Because of the topic, because of the, the, the subject matter, mm -hmm. because of what you're dealing with, you know. And I'm proud of who I am. That's one thing. Make them, don't make, uh, if I have a choice, if I have a choice mm -hmm. of starting all over to get to where I am today, I will not change that thing, you know. If I die and come back tomorrow and somebody asks me who you want to come back as, I want to come back as Raja. Mm -hmm. I want to come back as me, nobody else. Mm -hmm. I admire other people. I admire them for what they have accomplished and what they have done and different spheres and all those things, singers and um, performers and whatnot. But I don't want to be them. I do not want to be them. If I ever have to come back on this earth, I want to come back as me. Because I know what I started off as, what I wanted to do and where I am today and where I'm going from here. That's the confidence that I have in myself. I set that out. And it is not being cocky. You know. It is, again, being analytical and logical. This is what I want to do. This is how I'm going to do it. This is what I'm going to do to accomplish it. I have accomplished up to here. This is what I want to do to uh, this Piece of, uh, this piece of my life and that piece of my life worked out in my head putting it to, to practice putting it to practice because I have chosen a path that is not an easy path I remember very distinctly when we were in primary school and people would be asking about what you wanted to be. It was always doctor, lawyer, engineer. Doctor, lawyer, engineer. Mm -hmm. You'll never hear accountant. Mm. Because people didn't even know that I was that, what I was. I never used to say anything. Because I, it, none of those things fit my mold. It did not. It did not fit what I want because, and it will prod you. So I say, I'm a businessman like my father. Mm -hmm. And I done it. But that's not what I wanted to become. Of course, it's part of my life because it, it, it is something that is embedded in me from a very young man to now. So the business part of it is just second nature. But the education part, and education again was, was not only what you hear, what you read, what you study. The practical part of it was also important because I tell persons, if you want to be a sexologist, the practical part is most important. If you want to be a sex therapist, that is even greater, the practical part. Because if you don't understand what is taking place there, and if you don't understand the manipulation and the things that goes with it, you cannot be good at what you're doing. I agree. You cannot be good at what you're doing. So the practical part is of utmost importance. And thinking about it as a sex therapist now, being involved in that part of it, the, the practical part of it, still you have not heard my name in controversy. And that's the most dangerous part. Mm -hmm. Because even in the United States, to, to practice sex therapy, you have to be licensed, and doctors cannot pr practice that, you know. Mm -hmm. You have to take a special road, mm -hmm. a special way mm -hmm. of, edu of education to get to that point, you know. Mm -hmm. Now, I could go and do the license in the United States mm -hmm. and pass it and become a sex therapist in the morning, you know. Mm -hmm. But I choose not to. I've been asked to do that by consult the consultancy work I do and whatnot. Why don't you come up here? You'll be a billionaire. I don't want to be a billionaire. Mm -hmm. 
I don't. I've been asked that many times by persons who I deal with and know my, know my capabilities and my ability. Mm -hmm. And I tell them plain, I don't want that. I like Trinidad. I like sweet Trinidad. <laughs> I like doing what I do here. Yes. I love doing what I do here. Mm -hmm. Come and sit down in, in Power 102. Mm -hmm. Go back home. Sexucate people. Sexucate. <laughs> relax. Listen to my soca. Mm -hmm. Listen to my chutney. Mm -hmm. Go to Aramayin if I want to. I could do what I want to. When I'm living there, I can't do that. That, I would, I, that wouldn't give me happiness. And again, if a person thinking about it from a monetary standpoint, very lucrative. Very lucrative. So I, when I was doing consultancy work in Las Vegas, I was asked by the doctors in the clinic there to get my license to practice and migrate. And I look at them and say, you crazy? Mm -hmm. You know how sweet Trinidad is? <laughs> They say, but well, you know, of course, they just read the headlines and they see all the yeah. crime and what. They say, but well, what about all the crime and kidnapping and what? And I say, that don't bother me. Mm -hmm. I say, I'm a trainee. I live a trainee life. So I come back here now. Despite the fact that you could be financially well off, would I be happy? Mm -hmm. And the answer would be no. The lovely people I just meet here, you think I can meet that over there? The characters that you deal with here, and, and when I say characters, I don't mean it in a negative way. The individuals that you deal with here, you can't get that out, of, out there. The beauty of Trinidad, you can't get that. People, when, when you, that's the psychology of Trinidad. Yeah. There's an underlying beauty that when you tap into that, you want nothing but that, you know. Nothing but that. Especially if, 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 if you, you have it in a diversified way. The larger the diversification, the more persons involved and whatnot, then you see the true beauty. And that is what makes it easy for me to do that here. Mm -hmm. So that's why when persons ask about the education of young ones and the things of a sexual nature, if it should be done and how it should be done. But again, if you have a ministry, which we have ministries in Trinidad, that wants to embark on something like that, they must set up, they must set up something and they must give the directive of what should be done and how it should be done. Now, it's the individual to, uh, that has to marry the information with that. How am I going to take this information and use the guidelines of the ministry to do it? And the person must be adapted at doing that. So that's where education of the individual comes in. Not everyone could do that. You have to take the guidelines now and, and fit what you know into the guidelines so that you don't break any rules. That is also important. How do I take this information and fit it into the rules of the ministry? The rules are the social norms and, and all these different things that you'll be encountering and still be able to put the information on because I used to do it before. So I know what I'm talking about. I did it for many years on invitation from different schools and whatnot. I, I would go there and I say, okay, what are your rules and regulations and what I'm allowed to do and not allowed to do? When I was offered a radio program on Radio Jagriti when they now started off. Radio Jagriti is a Sanatan Dharma Mahasabha radio station. And I remember asking Mr. Satmaraj, I said, if somebody should ask me a question about sex, what do I do? He said, give them the answer. Don't you have the answer? That's why we have you here. Give them the answer. I said, you sure it would? He said, no, 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 you go ahead and give them the answer. And I spent three wonderful years doing that there. I did a program called SWAST. SWAST means health. So we were doing a health program, but incorporating sex education into it. So if I could do it there, this is the Sadatan Dharma Mahasabha station. If I could do it there, I could do it anywhere. I could take that same knowledge and package it anywhere. I know we have to um, close yes. off yes. at 8. Time just flew away from us there. Yes. So folks, yeah. thank you very much for tuning into the program and being part of the program today. We'll be back tomorrow. Junior and I will be on Sex Explosion tomorrow evening from 9. Join us then. Yes. Good night. Thanks for all the information. It's been very, very informative. As Dr. Raj for Sex Explosion Thursdays. Like he said, he'll be back tomorrow with family from 9 till midnight. Should I be on a karaoke? Yeah, we invited to stay tuned to 102.1 FM for a live broadcast.